Testing AngularJS events is fairly trivial. The one main gotcha is the fact that you do need to kick off the AngularJS lifecycle when you fire off an event, much like testing watchers, for instance. In this case, I've brought back the Pi controller, and I have a listener here called Pi has been depleted. Uh, when this gets fired, it's a simple listener, it doesn't pass any data, but it sets the warning to red alert, and it sets these slices to zero. So this can get sent from the root scope, or any scope on top of this one, and it will get fired off. So let's take a look at the spec here. I want to talk a little bit about the structure here. I'm going to take this uh, scope.digest, actually, and I'm going to move it out into the main before each method. And the reason for that is because we want to just be set up at the start. This is for our watchers and our event listeners, so we don't get any surprises when we run the first digest. Uh, and then I'm going to create a block here called listeners. I like to nest my describe blocks with each thing I'm describing. This doesn't change the way the code performs. This is just for the developers and for organization and for your output in theory. We're going to split this vertically. Okay, so we just want to make sure that two things happen. One, it should set the warning to red alert. And let's see, we can do a root scope. We know this is going to be broadcast from the root scope. Uh, in your test, you want to do this from whatever scope it's normally going to be broadcast from. So if it's just a parent scope, uh, then you want to do it from a parent scope of the current scope. And we want to expect that scope.warning is equal to red alert. Okay, likewise, uh, it should set slices to zero. Take the same thing, digest the scope. Expect equal scope dot slices. Okay, so we've got the two cases in there. We should be able to run our karma tests and have 32 pass.